Good evening. Oh, hang on, I gotta change my page. I'd like to call the public hearing and regular business meeting of mayor and city council for the city of Snellville, Georgia for Monday, February 27th, 2023 to order. We do have a quorum, everyone is present. And I'm sporting a baseball cap tonight because this is one of our new um, 100th anniversary hats that we have for sale. Uh, we have some um, different, what, swag? Yeah, the display case is right outside the door. So when you go out to leave, go right, you can see the glass windows there. Um, there's some shirts and a, a tumbler, hats, a beautiful Christmas ornament, some, uh, coins um, to commemorate Snellville's 100th birthday this year in August. So if you would uh, like to support that, uh, the prices are very reasonable. Um, so just stop by that window and then you can stop in City Hall to purchase anything that you would like. And now we will do the invocation. We have Pastor Quincy Brown from the Snellville United Methodist Church. Will you pray with me? Almighty and merciful God, for this spring-like day, even though the calendar says otherwise, we give you thanks, for this is a day in which we've never seen and one in which we will never see again. We're grateful for this opportunity to gather, to hear the concerns of this great city. God, I pray special blessings upon the mayor and city council and everyone gathered here. Bless them in ways that they can never ask or imagine. And God, we pray for the continuing flourishing of Snellville. For we know that when the city flourishes, its citizens will thrive. So God, we thank you for all things and we ask it in your name, amen. Thank you, Quincy Brown. And now we're gonna do the Pledge to the Flag and we have a special guest tonight, Carter Kushner with Boy Scout Troop 50 and he's on his way to Eagle Scouts. Will everyone please rise, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance and remove all non-religious headgear. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We appreciate your efforts in the Boy Scout and for being here with us tonight. We have no ceremonial matters, so we'll move to the minutes. Is there a motion? Motion to approve the minutes of the February 13th, 2023 meetings. There is a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your hand. That is six in favor with none opposed. We have no invited guests, committee or department reports, so we'll move to the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion? Motion to approve the agenda for um, February 27th, 2023. There's a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your hand. That is six in favor with none opposed. And now we'll move on to our public hearing. <clears throat> we have several items under the public hearing tonight and we'll go with uh, item a second reading sup 22-07 consideration and action on application by brian vu abn investment group llc the property owner requesting a special use permit and variances from the unified development ordinance for a drive-through restaurant at the former crystal restaurant location on the 0.775 plus or minus acre property zoned BG general business district and located in the town center overlay district at 2484 East Main Street, Snellville, Georgia 
That is tax parcel 5026-240. I think so. Mr. Thompson, did you want to say something on this? Um, I believe after further discussion, we need a little more time to discuss some of the issues on that property. So um, let the applicant know, and uh, they requested it to be tabled to uh, March 27th. To March 27th. Is there a motion by council? Motion to table SUP 22-07 through the March 27th meeting. <clears throat> there is a motion to table this hearing until March 27th. Is there a second? Second. There is a motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your hand. That is six in favor with none opposed. So we'll he hear this item and have the public hearing on March 27th. We have item B, second reading, RZ 23-01 and LUP 23-01. Consideration and action on applications by James and Megan Tony, applicant and property owner, requesting A, to amend the Snellville 2040 Comprehensive Plan Future Land Use Map from Low Density Residential to North Road Redevelopment Area. B, to amend the Official Zoning Map from RS30 Single Family Residential District to NR North Road District and request for variances from the Unified Development Ordinance to operate a financial services office on a 1.129 plus or minus acre site located at 2154 North Road, Snellville, Georgia, tax parcel 5039032. Mr. Thompson. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council, um, public for being here tonight. Uh, we have um, an application before us tonight at 2154 North Road. They're requesting um, a rezoning as well as a land use plan amendment. Uh, the rezoning from RS30, which is a single family residential district to uh, North Road District and low density residential land use amendment to North Road Redevelopment Area, area for the financial services offices for uh, Tony Financial Services. Uh, we've recommended uh, approval with conditions. Just a little background, everybody uh, is probably aware, with the Mason, aware of the Mason Todd House built sometime in the late 1800s. Uh, has had different uses throughout its tenure in Snellville. Um, most recently was a residential dwelling, uh, was gonna be used for an event space, was never able to uh, get all of the kinks worked out for that development. And now uh, it's being presented as just a, uh, an office facility for Mr. Tony for a few employees and his customers. Um, they plan to keep the character, everything is gonna stay the same. Um, as, as it's currently there with just some um, improvements, the exterior facade. Yeah, I'm sorry, can you guys see that okay? There we go. Now you can see the house is oriented towards north uh, with um, an entrance on east side. Uh, they want to allow the um, gravel to remain as, as one of the variances. Um, they also want to allow, there's this uh, structure in the back is believed to be the old outdoor kitchen to the house, so it's historical. Uh, they want to be a, able to keep that uh, within the 40-foot buffer. And um, they've also requested, due to some drainage issues, uh, a waiver of the requirement for the sidewalk and planter strip adjacent to Eastwood Drive. Um, this area of North Road is kind of the transitional zone between the residential uses. Uh, to the north. Uh, there is a, another business, uh, the old chiropractic office there on the corner crossed East, East Gate or Eastwood. Um, so we feel like uh, with the minimal uh, change to the uh, Mason Todd house that it can exist and, as an office with little uh, to no adverse effects on the community. So we recommend approval of the variances as well, and the conditions as laid out in the ordinance and in the staff report. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Any council questions of Mr. Thompson? Um, Mr. Thompson, I noticed in our discussions of this property, we talked about um, deleting the six-foot privacy fence, which is shown at the top of the drawing up 
on the screen. Um, is that in the packet and the conditions as stated, or does that need to be a separate um, issue? And that's um, I think we can handle that site development unless you want to memorialize it in a condition because the fence isn't required per se okay. per the code. It was just something I think that they, the applicant was going to do to appease the property owners. But after they showed up uh, during the planning commission and uh, indicated that they would prefer a wooded planted buffer instead of a fence. So um, I think the applicant's okay with that. I'll let them speak to that, but yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions of the council for Mr. Thompson? Yeah, Mr. Thompson, would you um, explain the rationale behind allowing the gravel driveway oh, to yes, remain sir. when we normally require mm -hmm. a, a concrete driveway? Yes, correct. Um, the gravel driveway in this case uh, will serve two purposes. One, um, I believe the, most of the, the neighbors and myself feel that the gravel will keep it more historic instead of putting new uh, pavement down, which could be asphalt or concrete. And um, once those uh, pervious surfaces, gravel is considered pervious, uh, becomes impervious, uh, concrete or asphalt, it creates, uh, could create the potential need for a detention pond. And then a detention pond on a property like that would probably look out of place. So as long as the natural drainage is being melt now, which it is mostly grass, uh, we believe that we can uh, allow the gravel to remain and still have a quality uh, business there. And how will that um, former out outdoor kitchen be be used now do you know i don't think there's any plans in time for them to use it other than to not tear it down right now maybe in the future to uh restore it i think that would be really cool because most of it's still there it's a little rickety but um pretty cool piece of history in my opinion mr thompson yes could sir you, could you make sure you're speaking into the microphone Sorry, I know. so the people in the get back a little the, longer cord yeah I, I know you're too tall for it but you have to hunch over like everybody else. I'm sorry. Any other council members with questions for Mr. Thompson? Thank you, Jason. Yep. And now we'll call the applicant forward if you'd like to come and present your case. Thank you, Mayor. Alex Mitchum, professional address 4525 South Lee Street, Buford. Uh, it's not often you get to come and uh, preserve a historical resource when you're doing zonings and development stuff. So uh, definitely I appreciate that tonight. I also appreciate it because it's in my, my uh, native city of Snellville, so where, I, where I, I, I called home for many, many years. Jason did a great job teeing this up. Uh, Jason and uh, Megan Tony are here tonight. Uh, um, I'm speaking on their behalf. But yes, all those comments that you that you had earlier, uh, their their preference would be to uh, restore that uh, out out kitchen there in time. But basically, everything, all the efforts we put forth in this project is to what you see today is what you're going to see tomorrow, just renovated and uh, you know and keep it you know they keep that neighborhood feel and it is a, it's a transitional uh, piece of property which you're all very aware of so I think it's a it's an ideal use for the the, the site and uh, we're just happy to uh, to bring this project to you so I'll be happy to answer any questions are there any questions of counsel for mr. Mitchum um, mr. Mitchum due to the historic nature of the property um, would your client be open to putting on the stairs, the, the brick front stairs, assuming they're going to stay, a sign that said Mason Todd House in the year it was built, just so as people are driving by, they'll, they'll, there'll be something to memorialize that it's one of the few historic structures that we still have left here in the city? I think that's a reasonable request. We could talk about that or, or, or signage. I know there was some discussion with signage uh, in the past couple of meetings. So, but something to, that would commemorate that, I think that's a reasonable request. We'd be open to that. Um, Mr. City Attorney, would that is there a way for us to do that without it counting against their signed square footage as allowed under our code since it's a historical marker rather? Okay. Okay, so there's nothing that we have to. It's, it's not there. It's not there. Really, they're advertising it. It's going to be a historical marker that you know, was put in our request. So yeah, I think okay. Um, no plans for anything signing on the structure. Sure. <coughs> okay, just wanted to make sure that we didn't have to say our legal gobbledygook to 
allow them to have a sign. <laughs> That's the technical term, or legal term, gobbledygook. Gobbledygook, yeah. yeah. Good one. The city attorney trains us on all the <laughs> yeah. legal gobbledygook. Or zone it out the wazoo, so, as I like to say. Yes, so we can good. speak the lingo. That's right. Any other questions of council? I just have a suggestion. You might contact the state and have, have it declared officially a historic site. There's various agencies that will do that, and I think that kind of elevates it even further. Thank you. Any other council members with a question? Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> this is an, on our public hearing agenda tonight, so we will open the floor to public comment. If anyone would like to come forward and speak for or against this project, please step forward and provide your name and address for the record. Trisha Rollins, 2088 Harper Oaks. Um, I have to disclose that Tony is my, uh, Jamie Tony is my insurance agent, but I cannot imagine you not approving something like this, giving our, our town character. I've been passing by there this week and watching them clean it up and um, restructure and everything. And it, to me, it's a win-win situation, putting him there. I love getting my insurance agent off of 124. Not necessarily moving to North Road, but um, I think he, he'll do an excellent job. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rollins. Anyone else? Seeing no one, I will close a public comment and entertain a motion. Motion to approve LUP. Oh, excuse me. Right, two separate, two separate yeah. motions, yes. Motion to approve LUP 23-01 as read by the mayor. There is a motion to approve LUP 23-01. Is there a second? Second. second. Nope. I'll get Dave. He was louder. So we have a motion and a second to approve the LUP. Any comments by council? Seeing none, all in favor, please raise your hand. That is six in favor with none opposed. The land use plan is updated. Now, is there a motion on the RZ? Motion to approve RZ 23-01 as read by the mayor. There's a motion to approve RZ 23-01. Is there a second? Second. There is a motion and a second. Any comments by council? All in favor, please raise your hand. That is six in favor with none opposed. Welcome, congratulations. We look forward to seeing the finished project. And now we have item C, second reading UDO 23-01, consideration and action on a proposed text amendment to Article 6, use provisions of Chapter 200 of the Snellville Unified Development Ordinance to establish definitions, applicable zoning districts, and use standards for A, retail sales of beer, wine, and or distilled spirits for off-premises consumption, package store, B, halfway house, and C, boat, recreational vehicle, utility, or enclosed trailer sales, leasing, rental, or service. Mr. Thompson. Okay, so we'll have a couple items that I'll discuss real quick, and most of them are really the main focus is the continuation of the regulation of the vote for alcohol alcoholic uh, package stores or package stores of distilled spirits uh, to be allowed uh, under the use chart uh, within the UDO so that it can exist as a use and then the city code amendment deals with the standards of the definitions of uh, how that's going to happen as far as um, definitions of the store operations per state law um, also um, distance standards where they can be located how big um, the store can be how many there will be uh, currently there can only be two in snellville will be done with a lottery after completing and uh, passing an application process and uh, this has all been going on for 
couple of years now, finally uh, crossing the finish line. So two things on the agenda, but mainly just the additional definition and then the standards which it runs in the city code. I'm happy to answer any questions. And a little housekeeping on a halfway house and boat and recreational sales. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Are there any questions of council for Mr. Thompson? Um, Mr. Thompson, on the uh, first part, uh, under halfway house, we're just updating the definition Correct. That, we, that we had to come up to state standard? Yeah, well, there's some, what we found now in uh, zoning is a full combat sport, so if you don't specifically lay them all out and i think halfway house was kind of pushed in with another similar but not exact use so we just want to make sure we pulled it out and uh because there was some concern especially after what happened in abington to make sure they're not in our neighborhoods so thank you sir thank you any other questions of counsel for mr thompson no Now we will open the floor to public comment. If anyone would like to speak for or against uh, the updates in this, in the Unified Development Ordinance, please step forward and give your name and address for the record. Seeing no one rushing for the podium, then I will close the public comments or the public hearing portion of the meeting and entertain a motion. Madam Mayor, I make a motion that we approve UDO 23-01 as presented in our agenda packet and by our Director of Planning and Development. There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. There is a motion and a second on the floor. Is there any comments by council? Then I will entertain the vote. All in favor, please raise your hand. That is six in favor with none opposed. So the updates will be made. And now we'll have item D, second reading, ordinance 2023-04, consideration and action on an ordinance to amend portions of chapter six of the code of ordinances of the city of Snellville to allow for the issuance of licenses to sell distilled spirits by the package pursuant to the referendum vote conducted November the 8th, 2022. Uh, Jason already discussed a little of this um, in the previous item. Um, the draft regulation, proposed regulation has been on our website for quite a while now. Um, so is there a motion by council? Motion to approve ordinance 2023-04 as read by the mayor. There is a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. There is a motion and a second. Any comments? Or, or I was informed this is just an ordinance update, so there um, doesn't have to be the public hearing um, portion on here. But I can open the floor, so uh, I will open the floor if anyone would like to comment. Again, seeing no one rushing, rushing to the podium. We got a quiet group tonight. Then I will entertain, a, uh, or I will call for the vote. Get my words right here. All in favor, please raise your hand. That is six in favor, so none are opposed. We have adopted that ordinance. We have nothing under our consent agenda, no old business. Under new business, we have a few items. We have consideration and action on amendment of the planning and development fee schedule. This is to update the planning, um, planning department fee schedule. It updates one item for um, rentals, is that right? short-term rentals, licenses, and then the other is to add the licensing fee for the package stores. Is there a motion? 
Motion to appro approve the um, new planning and development fee schedule. There is a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. So motioned and a second. All in favor, please raise your hand. That is six in favor, so none are opposed. That fee schedule will be updated. And we have item B, consideration and action on surplus of police vehicles and equipment. There are three police vehicles that are going to be surplused, provided the vote comes out, a couple of late, uh, radar, uh, laser radar items as well that'll go up for sale if they get surplused. Is there a motion? Motion to surplus police vehicles and equipment. There is a motion to surplus the equipment. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your hand. That is six in favor, so no, none are opposed. And now we have item C, my nomination and asking for council confirmation to James Tony to the Downtown Development Authority for post five with an expiration date of June 30th of 2024. Is there, um, or this is my nomination to the DDA. Is there uh, an asking for your confirmation? All in favor, please raise your hand. That is six in favor, so none are opposed. Jamie, welcome to the DDA. Thank you. That ends all of our business for tonight. So we will go into council reports and we'll start with council member Solange Destang. Okay, good evening everyone. I wanna congratulate Corporate De Vries for receiving the Law Enforcement Award from the Veterans of Foreign Affairs on February 18th. Corporal De Vries was recognized as the Law Enforcement Public Servant of the Year for the State of Georgia. That is a huge honor. And I'm congratulating him again. I know he's not here, but Chief is here, and I'm sure Chief will bring the congrats to him. Good job. Tomorrow we are coming to a close of the Black History Month festivities. I hope that several of you had a chance to participate in the Black History events that took place all over Gwinnett. If you didn't get a chance to attend, then you missed a very good thing. But don't worry, there's always next year. Remember also that Black History is American history. Let me also add that if you would like to recite the invocation at our city meetings, then please contact me at estestang at snellville.org. I would love to plug you in. Um, see, I'm going to say in Spanish now, okay, for the viewers who are at home. Si tu quieres entregar una invocación, por favor, tu puedes mandarme un correo a mi email sdstang at snellville.org y yo puedo ponerle en la lista ya tu puedes venir para hacer el invocación cuando nosotros tenemos reuniones. On that note, I want to wish you all a very good night, safe travels on your way home, and I will see you again in two weeks. Take care. Buenas noches a todo el mundo que está aquí. Um, yo está pidiendo para Dios poderoso darte un, pas, un pase muy bien para ir a tu casa. Buenas noches y cuida, cuídate. Thank you. Thank you, Solange. Council Member Linsky? No report. Councilmember Schultz. Okay, I would like to share some photos from our community garden work morning that we had this past um, Saturday. And I want you to especially look at the, well, in the following pictures anyway, the smiling faces on this group. I mean, everybody just had a great time and you can just tell everybody enjoyed being there. It didn't even seem like work really because we all just had a really good, good time together. Um, I do want to mention that the uh, community garden will start to sell plants that they've been growing in the greenhouse at the um, 
March 18th, is that, is that the correct date? The third Saturday in March, I didn't write the date down, it's the third Saturday in March, they will be um, out here in the parking lot with all their plants that they've been growing in the greenhouse. They have some, some beautiful plants that they've been very, very carefully nurturing. <laughs> And the, um, they price them at just two dollars for a four pack. So they're really well priced, really healthy plants. So you can see there some of the plants in the greenhouse. Okay, thank you, Erica. And then I have a surprise to share with y'all that I'm excited about. I got this in the mail. It actually came. Uh, in the mail Sunday, we got a Sunday delivery. But the Snellville Farmers Market is best of Gwinnett. And I just, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I wanna say we never ask a single customer or a single vendor to submit a vote, it just, happened. <laughs> we were very, very surprised and very honored. And I especially want to thank the, the, the folks that volunteer with us because we couldn't do what we do if it wasn't for the volunteers that we have. They, they really make the market what it is. So we're, we're just very proud of that. We're going to display this on our, on our table at the market every week. And do something on our Facebook page, I guess. So I did want, you're the first to know about that. I haven't even told Kelly McAloon yet. <laughs> Thank you, Gretchen. Council Member Emanuel. Well, first I think we need a round of applause for Gretchen and Kurt because without them, the farmer's market would never be what it has become. <laughs> Second item is the Georgia legislature is in session and seems like every year they come up with a couple of bills that are just designed to take power away from cities. This year it's HB 517 and if this bill passes, the city, neither the city nor the county will be able to put any constraints on what they call design elements. So you could have a house next door to you that is just cinder block building with a flat roof and no windows. And they can put whatever decoration they want on the outside. So anything goes. Uh, Shelly Hutchinson is your state rep in this area. I would advise you to contact her and ask her to vote no for HB 517. Uh, a couple of years ago, it was HB 302 and, <clears throat> excuse me, Basically, this, from what I can see, these bills are promoted by real estate developers, builders, and uh, rental agencies. And it's basically to let builders build junk because all they have to do is meet state minimum standards. So you could have, you could have a, a building with construction grade plywood as the outside or cinder blocks, no, no, no windows, cinder block wall, unpainted and a flat roof. So you could be living next to a warehouse. So I think it's important if you get, uh, if, if you really want to uh, get into it, you can go look and find the subcommittee and write to the members of the subcommittee. And if you have problems finding any of them, send me an email and I'll get you a list. But we really appreciate it because it, it would be devastating for your neighborhood and possibly for the house next door. Thank you, Dave. Mayor Pro Tem Warner. Um, as my esteemed colleague just mentioned, uh, the legislature on HB 517, in, in their grand wisdom, named that uh, pending bill the Homeowner, Georgia Homeowner Oc o Opportunity Act. And in your neighborhood, if you have an open lot, that means they could come in and build a plywood sided structure. No, none of the architectural design that we put in place on an existing uh, subdivision, it, it might be precluded from us being able to enforce that, which that's horrible. 
Um, this is actually going to commit or going to be heard in committee tomorrow down at uh, the state house and is expected to see the floor on Thursday. Um, Shelly Hutchinson has been very supportive. She's told the mayor and I that she does not support this and will not vote for it. But many of us who've, if you're in this room, you've probably been involved some way, shape or form before in government. And we know people who are in other locations um, than just our specific representative. So please reach out to anybody that you may have contact, uh, their contact information. We also have coming up the Housing Regulation Transparency Act, um, which is HB 514. I would also ask you to contact your elected representatives and ask them to not support that. That would keep us from being able to put a moratorium in place longer than 100, 180 days. And if we did put one in place, um, we'd have to wait another 180 days before uh, putting another moratorium in place. Now, that sounds like, oh, that makes sense. Right now, we have some issues with uh, fake cannabis stores or CBD stores that we've put a moratorium in place because what is being sold at these locations is not regulated by the state. It's not FDA regulated. Um, it's, again, kind of the Wild West, and we put a morator moratorium in place until the state or the federal government, well, we put it in for a specific period of time in hopes that the state or federal government will find a way to make sure that these products that are being sold are safe for us, for our children, for our parents. Um, it would preclude us from doing such in the future. Um, there are times for public safety or other reasons that we need to be able to stop things from happening in our city. That should be up to your elected officials to decide and not someone who's sitting down at the state capitol that thinks that evidently we just do this willy-nilly. Um, also, I mentioned at last meeting the SB, which is Senate Bill 188, which is the build to rent uh, legislation. Right now, we're seeing a lot of neighborhoods that have been zoned as single family dwellings, but haven't been built yet, are being bought before they're ever constructed because the builder can sell every single house in the neighborhood to one entity and they become rental homes. Sounds like a great idea, except for what we see through our code enforcement is when we have rental homes, they typically are being used by larger families or groups of individuals. Sometimes they're being divided up into as many as 10 bedrooms under uh, a group called pad split. And that leads to parking problems. That leads to all sorts of issues. We have recently passed a build to rent ordinance which mirrors our regular ordinance, except takes care of parking requirements. The streets are two feet wider because a lot of people park on the street when it's a rental. Um, and also all exterior maintenance, both the grounds and the exterior of the building are to be handled by the HOA, which keeps us, all of us, from having to worry about making sure the yards are mowed and the gutters are fixed when they're falling off the house. We have one person to contact or one entity to contact to take care of that. The state is looking to take that away from us, away from you. We did that to protect the quality of our neighborhoods and they think it's wise for them to be able to do that to any property that is zoned or that comes under zoning regulation. So please reach out to your state representative and state senators that you may know and ask them to vote against SB 188. Thank you very much. Thank you, Todd. And I just have a couple of comments. Um, had a great day Saturday morning at the Run the Reagan uh, race. Uh, 
my family, and we had our grandson for the weekend, so we did the 5K walk, and uh, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law and my niece with her new baby came out, so we had a great time uh, walking the, the 5K on Ronald Reagan. It's, it's a whole different road when you're on your feet <laughs> rather than in your car. You don't realize the hills are quite so hilly. Um, I was also honored to be able to give a proclamation in honor of uh, Parks Man. He was the one of the founders of the Run the Reagan Race uh, uh, back, I couldn't believe it, it's 28 years ago that that race has been going on. Uh, but I was able to present that proclamation to honor him to his widow, Vivian Mann. Um, so it was a, a great opportunity to be able to honor her and, and uh, focus on his legacy. And then also Mayor Pro Tem, um, Todd Warner and Matt Pepper and I met with Congresswoman Lucy McBath uh, last week. Uh, her and two of her staff came out for, um, we haven't met before, so we were able to make a great connection, um, got some good contact information with her staff. Um, so if anybody's having any issues with your with any federal agency, you can feel free to contact her office and somebody will get on it for you. Um, so and we have those resources as well. So if you can if you want to email us and we can put you on to who you need to speak to um, or you can call her office directly. She is there to help and assist in any way that she can. Um, so that is all of my report. So I will open the floor to public comment. We did have one person sign up, so we'll call him forward first, and then anyone else can step up after that. Mr. Carter. Good evening, Council and Madam Mayor. Hope I'm speaking loud enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just like to make a few comments. This is about last, last, our last meeting. I entitled this Civility because that sort of came up. Uh, those of us who read the online agenda for council meeting on 2-13-2023 may have seen a proposal for further council discussion about civility. Now, events here in the past month indicates to me that we are watching a slow erosion of civility among those whom I hope come to these meetings for the sole purpose of continuing our work to maintain Snellville as a place where everybody is proud to be somebody. The emphasis on everybody is on everybody. Uh, there are unsubstantiated accusations uh, for the sole purpose of promoting untruth that the word everybody is exclusive rather than inclusive. And that's what I like to speak to. Uh, because we do have some educators here on our council, uh, they may be the, the first to appreciate these words from the Rubiat of Omar Khayyam. The moving finger writes and having writ moves on nor all your piety nor wit shall lure it back to cancel half a line. Other than the biblical golden rule, there are few more succinct yet powerful guidelines for reason and civility. I have stated here in this building publicly and privately that I will do all that I can to keep Snellville meetings from slipping into the uncivility all of us can easily see if we watch several of the online viewings of city council meetings in places like the city of South Fulton, Georgia. Yelling, pontificating, insulting, and threatening have become normalized there. We cannot allow our meetings to sink into that cesspool of ignorance and non-productivity. Now, I should have done this last meeting, but I wanted to think before I said anything. So, thank you, Council Member Linsky, and your Snellville Youth Commission in South Whitehead High School for Let the People See, the black resistance. If when meeting members applauded her and the Snellville Youth Commission, you felt a knot in your stomach, you have an issue. Thank you, Council Member Warner, for your heartfelt synopsis of the presentation about Emmett Till. 
I was alive and aware in 1955. You are correct. We are not in that, quote, that world. If we were, I would not be here speaking before you. South Gwinnett High School would not look as it does, and Snellville will not have the events on Town Green where people of all races and all economic levels mix, mingle, and mesh. That is the Snellville I know. That is the Snellville of which I am proud to be a part. Your words once uttered can never be taken back nor the harm undone. That is the basis of civility. Now, we cannot solve national issues here, but we can save and promote Snellville. Begin by lighting candles rather than cursing the darkness. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carter. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Carter. If anyone else would like to speak, please come forward. State your name and address for the record. Five minutes on one topic, please. Hi, I'm Ann LaFavor with LaFavor, et cetera. My address is 35 Patterson Road, Suite 465293, Lawrenceville, Georgia, 344. And I chose to speak only because of what I just heard. It is the reason we have to have true American history, which includes black history. Um, if you know history, everything I've read, everything I know, and yes, I was in fact a part of the civil rights movement. So I'm probably a little older than some in here. It happened. It was very offensive to me last week to hear that we do not have racial issues in this country because we have too many young black people dead over senseless crimes. So we have to be sensitive to what we say about any and all cultures and to be, to not have the true knowledge of history and to make statements that aren't true. I heard that uh, the movies and the stories you've heard by Emmett Teal was misrepresented. No, it wasn't misrepresented. It depends on what you saw because I lived that era. And I hate to say I'm still living it. I see a lot. And when one of your residents got up and spoke, it was heartfelt. It was truly heartfelt and it's sad and sickening for me as a black woman, a descendant of a slave, to hear comments like that. It traumatizes me. It also traumatizes other blacks because to dismiss our history and say that things have changed when I haven't seen that much change, I lived it. I went to segregated schools. I would love to see South Gwinnett equal to other schools in Gwinnett like Peachtree Ridge. I would love to see true issues that all the community of Snailville address. Um, it's more I can say, but like I said, I was offended. That's why I've gotten up. Thank you. Anyone else? Hello, Mayor and Council. Catherine Hardrick, 2280 Buckley Trail. And um, we all can agree to disagree. An injustice anywhere threats justice everywhere, right? So while there are many of us who get to go home and have podcasts, news stations, have great businesses, it doesn't mean that our children are going from high school to prison. It does not mean 
that the city of Snailville still has some cleaning up to do. We all have room for growth. And we can't let that slip on the positive changes because we do have diversity right in front of us. So we're not, I'm not discounting the growth, but we still have a lot to do because we are still dying, period. On a happier note, congratulations <coughs> to being 2022 Farmer's Market of the Year. Gwinnett Chat Outreach also received that same award. And I'd like to reach out to the mayor and council to partner with Gwinnett Chat Outreach as we used to have a relationship with the previous police chief. We just left the meeting with Lawrenceville and we we're trying to have a relationship with all of the 16 cities so we could continue to do the work so we can stop having children at 14 pick up weapons so we can stop our kids going to prison and committing crimes. And I'm asking you, the leaders of Snailville, to partner with us so we can be a, a positive force in these young people's lives. So the citizens and the students of South Gwinnett can thrive. Thank you. Thank you. Holmes 2088 Harbor Oaks Drive. Um, I'm here with a few neighbors tonight to say thank you. Um, you heard us and now I think you're listening. We've had the police out in our neighborhood pulling over people. It's got a curb, curb jumper this last week in front of my house. In fact, um, we're seeing action and we appreciate our city listening to us. We'd like to ask, I know this is the end of February in the um, campaign to get into the neighborhoods is ending. I would like to ask that y'all extend it for a period of time because uh, I think we just started and are seeing some evidence of it. So if you would consider talking to your police department and letting them um, come out in our neighborhood again for maybe another month. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Michael Culp, 1879 Harbor Oaks. Uh, and I want to repeat how thankful we are for the uh, increased patrolling. We had a sign for no trucks. A couple of them got put up. You guys have all messed up now because we know how quick things can happen. Yeah, don't get used to that. No, no, we're expecting that now. We've got a 48-hour turnaround on any of our requests now. Is that right? That was a perfect storm of happenings, okay, but well, I have to praise our public works department. Uh, Craig, stand up. Y'all need to give this man a hand. <laughs> he has gone above and beyond on several things this week. Well, we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Seeing none, then I will close the public comments and entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. There is a motion. Is there a second? Second. So motion and a second. All in favor, raise your hand. That is six in favor with none opposed. We are done. Thank you all for coming out. Be safe. <laughs>